screen. Hi, everybody. It's Nancy Reyes with For Your Canine. <laughs> and Joanne Swaggy with For Better, For Worse. Joanne always makes me laugh before we go on. Happy <laughs> anyway, Sunday, everybody. Yeah. Happy Sunday. I hope you all have had a great weekend. Um, I already, by looking at some of the Facebook, it's already been a pretty good weekend for some of you. Um, so today, hey Judy, today we're going to do a continuation of what a uh, topic we did two weeks ago, um, because there was so much on the topic that we couldn't cover it all in an hour. So we're going to kind of, uh, talk a little bit more about it and, um, kind of re review and answer. Hi, Congratulations, Karen. Yay. <laughs> um, and so a continuation of what we um, started a couple of weeks ago and answer more questions because I know there was a lot of questions and so we didn't get a chance to, to get to all of them, but we're going to hopefully do that tonight. So um, we were, it's just calm down. It's about arousal and excitability. And we actually, I just did a workshop yesterday. Uh, not so much on that, but that was one of the things we did cover and talk about a little bit. So to review, uh, energy and excitability, it comes in different forms and it looks different ways. And one of the people, I think one of the questions we had uh, last two weeks ago was the different, you know, what's, what's a, a, you know, how can you tell if the dog's aroused versus energetic? And one of the, the big tip offs is, um, is uh, movement, quality of movement. Uh, the quality of the movement when they're aroused is not productive in some in some cases, and it's very choppy and not smooth. Versus a dog that's you know just has a high energy, usually the uh, the movement's very smooth and easy and transition. Where aroused dogs, it's not. It's like if I, if you guys want a million dollars and I ask you to write your name, you're going to be so excited. It's not your fine motor skills kind of go away, and that's how you can tell if the, there's a arousal and, and if it's too high. So. Yep, I, I always sort of like to think of it too, is just a different analogy. Think about if we were filming you, what you look like walking through your house, right? And then think about what you look like walking through a haunted house, wow. right? You're very choppy, you're very, your your movements are really kind of short and, um, and, and choppy, like Nancy said. So it's just a completely different look, even though you might be in the same, your heart rate might be similar, right? Let's just say you got done exercising at home or something, but the quality of movement's different. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, Sharon, Sully was a wonderful example. Uh, some of you came to a, a workshop we had yesterday and it was, we had some really wonderful demo dogs. Uh, yeah. Back to, yeah. Mostly everybody on this call was over, was there Karen and Deb and, Sharon and Beth. Um, ooh, sorry, ooh. that was me. Sorry. <laughs> um, and so, so it was really some really interesting examples, and it's really great to be able to um, see it, right, and see that arousal and all that stuff. So, <clears throat> um, so today we're gonna address it. We're gonna address it in just pet dogs, but also we're gonna talk about it for performance dogs. Um, a little bit and kind of how to address that and what we're, and we're going to talk about a few different sports too. Um, but it doesn't have to be only sports. So if you guys have questions on something else, go, please feel free to ask and um, put it up there. Um, so anyway, so that's kind of the tip off. And one of the things that we, we, we talk about is, uh, people really mistake arousal with drive. Drive is productive. You have a dog that's drivey that can run and do agility, um, and this the 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 movement is smooth. Versus an aroused dog is not usually a, a highly aroused dog because you know we're all aroused, right? Otherwise, we wouldn't be sitting up, we wouldn't be talking. Um, it's just the level and the uh, how much arousal and and what it does and what it does to the dogs. So, um, so that's kind of the biggest uh, the big thing. So. If there's any questions on anything else, it doesn't have to be sports, but we're going to talk a little bit more about that today. Yep. And and for those of you who might not do sports that are out there listening, understand, right? It's the same. When we talk about sports, we're asking the dog to perform a task. So maybe that's you are trying to get them to chill out when people come over. Same thing. You're still trying to get them to be thoughtful and perform a task. So um, don't get discouraged just because we're going to mention some things about sports. Right. So, uh, for example, uh, 
agility comes to mind really, really quickly, only because um, the dogs there, it's a very highly aroused force. I mean, they're running, their movement. With more movement is, high, is a higher arousal. So that's when you might see a dog run around the ring, right? Not very productive. Um, also, they might run into things, which is not usually a, a dog that's got drive and that's in their head isn't going to run into stuff. Yep. Or you see a dog that's that's doing the course, right? They're able to follow the handler, but they're dropping all the bars, right? As they go over the jumps, um, the, you know, the bars are falling on the ground. They're just, they're not super self-aware um, of their fine motor control, which is, is, that's, again, that sign of high arousal, they're, they're losing it. So they're not able to know where their feet are um, to be able to, to stay over those bars. Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, so those are, those are the things you're looking for. So, um, cause I, the reason we're, we're going to touch on it is because somebody asked that question, right? The, the dog goes to a dog show and it's so amped up that it doesn't perform. Uh, it doesn't perform very well. What do you do in that situation? Well, one of the things I, we've always recommended people do is the pre, uh, relaxation protocol that Suzanne has. It really works well. Uh, but because people think, oh, it's not going to want, it's not going to want to work. Oh no, it'll want to work. It'll just be in a more thoughtful manner. And it's something that you can do in training so that you can then, so that you can transfer it over, um, to, to the trial setting, right. Is one of them. Um, one of the big things that I see people doing agility all the time is have the dog sit ringside and watch the dogs running. That will be, give you an unproductive, uh, run depending on your dog, of course depending on how, how quickly your dog returns to baseline, because that's the other side of arousal, right? They can arouse, and, but they can come down quickly, or they can be aroused and not come down so quickly. Yep, and certain things are gonna bring your dog uh, up more than others, right? So I remember at a trial once, um, back in the day when I used to do agility, uh, there was people with a, a, a pretty high arousal border collie right at the end, and there was a turn and every dog that would go by, the dog would, ruff, 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 right? And it would kind of bounce at the fence as the movement went by. Well, herding breeds, that's what they track a lot. They're very visual breeds as for the most part. They track a lot of movement. So, right, that's, if you're trying to calm your dog down and then you're presenting something that is innately in their genetics supposed to arouse them, right? It, it, it's like stacking the challenges against yourself. Right, right. So that's. So if you have a dog that gets excited movement, um, and this is and this is uh, the other thing is when, uh, the dog is out a lot before they run, and for some dogs that's necessary, and for other dogs it isn't. So depending on your dog. So for example, if you have a dog that that's maybe a little dog reactive or worries a little bit about dogs, and she's out and about during during a, a trial while you're waiting your turn, that's going to just keep amping her up, right? So that when you get to the tra to the line, you might. You may or may not get a decent run out of that dog, depending on your dog, of course. Yep. And and with a sport like agility, right, remember, for the most part, movement keeps arousal higher, right? Not for every dog, but uh, if they can kind of sit down, calm down, and stop the motion, it usually helps. So if you're one of those people who's getting them ready and you're walking back and forth through all the dogs, right, and you have an arousal problem... Maybe go outside and walk your dog if you really need to to keep that motion going to warm up their muscles. Right, and um, actually, Mike asked me uh, yesterday about uh, walking when he's out walking his dogs because he walks all three of the dogs together. When people when they have a reactive dog, they usually they stop moving, but they don't give the dog something to do, so they're doing one part correctly, right? Stop moving if your dog's going to be reactive, but. And this is where we use the auto check-in. We give them that to do while the dogs are passing so that they would help, right? Uh, they would they would keep um, on baseline. So, Yeah. So, Mary, would relaxation protocol help a dog who's anxious or worried in the trial setting? You'd have to work on the relaxation protocol away from there. And the greatest part about the, the relaxation protocol is the dog, it's not a stay right? It's not a position that the dog has to maintain. The dog is free to move around. So it could help them, right? Oh, yeah. 
It and could absolutely settle them down and let them just kind of check the world around them and watch everything go by. But if that dog can't lay down, right, and it's it keeps getting up, it keeps getting up, it's looking, 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 then the dog's telling you, I'm not comfortable. This setting is is too much for me. Yeah. But Mary, um, yes, we I have had we do have some students that use it very successfully um at trials. But the and that's one of the keys, right? Working up to that level of busy. So a lot of people do the relaxation uh, protocol by their car at a trial to help their dog um, relax. And then eventually they come inside and they're able to do that. And it just keeps them calmer. And that's what all you're looking for, right? The relaxation is to keep them below a threshold um, and then and modify their, you know, their anxiety or whatever. Other things that help too um, is we've, we've also used nose work uh, for to help agility dogs focus more. Basically, um, they're still on food. They search a couple boxes away from the trial, obviously, like by their car, to do a couple searches and, and kind of, and that helps their anxiety level reduce and they and they are calmer. So we've used it that way many for many many uh, dogs. And after a while, you don't need it anymore. You don't have to. Or even for those dogs that do both sports, agility and nose work, they just bring hides with them and they put them out. They work them a little bit before they go in and run their dogs, and that helps with their high, with their anxiety and and calms them down a little bit, gives them something else to think about. So uh, I have had a cup a few students that have used that very very successfully. Yep, I, I have actually used that with my giant beast. Uh, when he was younger, he he's a show dog, so he would go to the confirmation ring. And that, I mean, they really do need to know where their feet are because they're being judged on, right, how well they're put together and how smooth their movements are and all of that. So um, I, the first day, he was all over the place. It was like trying to, to handle a buck and bronco. So the next day, I had um, just to hide with me, and we did a quick little vehicle search before he went in, and it was just enough. Um, to take the edge off of him, right? And that's from super high arousal, but it also helps, right, with the anxious or worried dogs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely with the with the worried dogs. And um, and you know, for some of the some of the agility folks that have come to see me that don't do nose work, they just do food in a box, and it's usually just fine for the for the dog and um, and for the handler, and they're able to manage that pretty nicely and uh, do a little a little search here and there, and then get in go in there and do their their agility runs. It just helps the helps with focus and attention, and gives their mind something else to do. So. Uh, those two things do work well. We've had that work very well together. And I think we I had one person come to me and we used it for obedience as well. Because it doesn't, the dogs aren't going to sniff. You know, everybody thinks, oh, they're going to sniff in the obedience ring. No, they're not. They never do. <laughs> nope. Nor do they in the agility ring. Right. Um, they might if they're anxious, but they're not going to just because they're doing that. So. Yeah. And, and you know, we're talking about just calm down, but you know, just to take a minute and yes, we both teach nose work and we both love it very much, but it really truly is such a helpful um, game for dogs that are worried or anxious. And um, I just recently rewatched the the TED talk and I found an, an hour and a half uh, lecture by um, Jack Panksy, um, mm -hmm. who unfortunately he just, he recently died. Um, and he did some really, really amazing work on emotions of animals. Mm -hmm. And what he found was that, um, the seeking behavior, which is basically what dogs do when they're sniffing for, um, you know, hunting for things that they want to find. Um, it, it really creates endorphins and dopamine in the brain. So, um, it, that is why it really, that sport really, really helps dogs gain some confidence and lower anxiety. Um, and it does the same thing in people. So they're, they're looking to stimulate that for some anti-anxiety drugs in humans. So, are you watching right. videos in the background? So I, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling up the video so you guys can watch it. So hold on one second. So you guys can, uh, in your leisure time, <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's about 17 minutes long, so it's yeah, it's, it's a good watch. It's um, lovely, yes. It's it's, yep. a, it's a lovely. Um, yeah, and it wants to come up. Hold on one second. Yeah. yeah so Sheila, um, while while Nancy's pulling up that video, there's absolutely if you're on um, the for your canine page or the for better for worse page, if you go to the videos section, all of the Sunday nights that we've ever done are out there. 
So if you can go back two weeks, um, you can find part one and you can rewatch that. So mm -hmm. I had that same question from somebody earlier in the week. Yeah. Yeah. It's always, they're always going to be there available for you guys to watch. So um, we talked a lot last, last time a lot about um, it's yeah. P A N S E P. Thanks up Jack. Actually I have his book too. Uh, yep. That's it. Uh, and he's wonderful. Uh, his research was very good. So um, anyway, so arousal that, um, and so, so one of the, here's one of the things, um, and uh, Sharon's on the call uh, and she was uh, at our facility and her dog did demo a high arousal. And it's interesting how dogs react to that high arousal, what uh, <laughs> jacks them up, right? He, um, and it was just a big open room there was there was an object or something that kind of um startled him it was like foam and he's a young puppy he's only 10 months old and that worried him enough and then he started running and doing laps and it was she had to and you had to physically stop them uh from stop him so he can calm down so that's another hallmark right some dogs are able to get really aroused and then come down pretty easily other dogs you have to interrupt it, take them out of the situation, that kind of stuff to make it stop. And that's when you know the arousal has gotten just a little bit over the top, right? Yep. And uh, this is for me personally, because I have one of these dogs. Um, if you have a dog that's, that's a fairly nice dog, he doesn't mind other dogs, he's not really mean. Um, and, and it seems like wherever you go, dogs are growling at your dog, <laughs> okay? A lot of times your dog is all sorts of jacked up, right? And the other dogs are basically saying, don't bring that over here. You just stay over there, right? It's it's um, <laughs> it's it's not something that a lot of dogs want to welcome into their space. So working on that, that calming them down really helps um, other dogs to, to welcome them as well. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing we wanted to touch on a little bit um, is is not all dogs arouse up mm -hmm. not all dogs get amped up and run around and all that that doesn't that not always how it works uh, and you can um and you can you know from people some people they're screaming and they're very loud when they get very excited and aroused other people aren't they're not quiet but inside it's like a boiling pot right and that's where sometimes you get it came out of nowhere nope <laughs> it was just it was there, right? And it was really, um, you just missed uh, some of the subtle signs. And the subtle sign is the quality of their movement. They don't move quite as well. Um, and some of that is very unproductive, so. Yep, I, I ha it's so funny. I have the spectrum of this in my house. I have I have the Doberman who is just crazy aroused. I have the Vishla who's, who's pretty even keeled. And then I have the Border Collie who when she gets aroused right she does go the opposite way she gets that slinky weird compressed movement and if something really you know frightens her i swear she looks like um like scooby-doo right whenever the feet start going in <laughs> and she's not really going anywhere yet um and so you know that's again if you put your feet down and you you could run away quicker but the quality of movement's not there so and she's run into walls you know trying to to get away from things um and, and that all comes from just not being able to, to pay attention. Because you're so amped up, right? Right, yep. Um, so yeah, it's one of those things that you really want to, um, uh, you wanna want, want to see what that looks like. As a matter of fact, um, does anybody else have any questions? I, Sharon, do you care if I share, um, Sharon, do you care if I share the video from um, Youngster? Good timing, Judy's question. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can pull it up. Um, yeah, the answer is actually the same, Mary, which is super interesting, right? Um, a lot of the, the protocols to help with arousal, it helps with the dog goes either way. Because really, in the end, it, it shows up to you differently in how they move, but the the inside, the inner emotions of the dog is arousal, and we have to l get that back down, um, and that will in turn, no matter if you're on the left or the right, it brings everybody sort of back to the center to 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 come back, back to calm. 
Yes. Uh, did Sharon answer? Uh, she said yes. She's okay with that. Okay. All right. We will. Um, let me locate it. I think I have. And then we can uh, show just some some brief. Um, see if I can find it. Some so, brief video on that. Right. So that's okay. I'll uh, I'll I'll elaborate on Mary's question as well. So Mary, think about think about it from a fearful standpoint, right? Because fear is still um, it's still arousal. Okay. Um, and so let's say if if you're afraid of snakes, right? Are you the person who's going to bust through the glass window and you're, you're gone, you're in your car and you're in the next county? Or are you the person that's kind of going to back into a corner and just freeze, right? And so internally, the answer is the same. Oh, my God, I'm deathly afraid of that snake, right? But the outcome looks very, very different to the person. And so when we deal with these dogs sometimes who internalize things, right? And again, like Nancy said, it came out of nowhere, right? It really didn't. They're, they're, they're throwing off all of the signs. Okay. Um, it's just, if you continue to push because you don't see them as well as you do the dog that goes big with it. Um, that's where, you know, those dogs that internalize things a little bit more, um, have more of that explosive. I didn't see it coming. Okay. So I found it incredibly. I'm pretty impressed with myself that I found it. Uh, let's see. Okay. <laughs> I will share the screen, which is not going to, the quality is not going to be so great, but um, it's, I can do it. Mm. Yeah, Judy, I actually have a snake, so I'm one of those weird people. I'm like, ooh, can I see? <laughs> oh my God. Hold on one second. Uh, let me. Let me t turn this off so we can now. Uh... Okay. All right. I will. Uh... Okay. So this is an example of unproductive, right, uh, movement with our, our young, a youngster. Um. It's not letting me wait. I have to. I'm gonna have to start playing it. Technical problems. Oh, isn't that the way? Jesus, <laughs> <laughs> it's like crazy. Uh, There you go. Yeah, not quite right, but close enough. It's okay. So that's a young, our young prince there. Um, it's I know it's hard to see because it's kind of far away, but uh, you see the dog. It's a young golden. He's only ten months. He's Sharon's on the call, so he's a. Um, so you see he's running. So you see, and he'll be back this way in a minute. His vis his um his movement is not as productive, right? Just kind of wild and and it looks friendly to people, right? But he's not really so nothing really happened there, right? He just saw that thing that's against the wall, that's what started it all. And that was just enough to get him to, and that, and he's just like, I can't. Lisa's gonna help try to uh, resolve it, right? Because one of the things you're looking for when things startle your dogs is can they resolve it? Um, and how quickly they can. Granted, this is a young dog, so he may not have the skills to resolve it as well as maybe a dog that's seen it before or that's had a little more experience. So we have to kind of think about that. So he he was still not able to resolve it. You see the running around and just running around and he did, did a shake, all of those things. He was just not, and he was sniffing something. He was just running, very unproductive. And he still was not able to resolve that foamy thing that was in the, in the, um, in the wall. So that's when we decided, I think uh, we decided to put him back on leash 
um, or st stop his motion so that he can come back. Because as you can see, he never, he did not resolve it. He did not let it go and he could not let it go. So we, we stopped, uh, we stopped it at some point. So that way uh, we can stop him, stop him. And so we can help him help himself. So, so that's a, a really easy example. And he's a young, young boy, but he was not able to resolve that thing on the wall. And all it is is like a foam that we use it to cover, you know, the, so it'll keep the cold out. So we had, um, so that's that's all it was. And again, it doesn't matter what it is because to him it was uh, worrisome, right? Okay, I mean, so I wasn't there, so I have some questions about this. Yep. Um, d were you calling him? Is Were you trying to get him to come back or were you just no. seeing if he could? Resolve it. No, we were not, we were not calling him. Okay. Right. So and again, I think for a lot of people right out there, it looks very, very similar to the happy, bouncy dog play. Right. right? So it's hard because it's small and I get it. Um, but I think what was the dog doing prior to the the squishy thing or the foam thing? Um, I can we can try to start from the beginning, but not much. He just came in. He just had come in. Just kind of mm -hmm. walking around and checking things out. Mm, no, he came in running. Uh, okay. So yeah, no, he's a well, he's a goal, he's a ten month old puppy. So you know, let me yep. let me let me re re uh, re cue and go back. Yeah. So and I'm asking these questions like I know exactly what I'm seeing, right? But I think to a large portion of our audience, this video really shows. I mean, and again, it's small but it's hard to understand what we're what we're explaining here right because it looks like we right and he's bouncing around and he's being silly and he's being a 10 month old dog right so how do you tell what's productive versus unproductive right um and what we were doing here just so we, maybe it'll help we we're trying to get him to let me see if i can make it Yep, there, and we're out of the picture. We're trying to get, so Lisa's sitting there. He is, Lisa is a familiar to him. Um, Lisa's familiar, she, he knows her. We were, t we were really assessing sociability of the dog, which um, he is, but we're assessing sociability. And this is sociability with somebody he knows. Um, but, so this is her just letting him in. He brings him from the crate and this is all that's happened, right? Not a lot. He sees Lisa, he knows Lisa, it's familiar. So he's very social, he loves her, right? And then uh, he's checking out stuff, but then he's like, okay, spends some time, walks around, but the environment, and again, nobody's interacting, nobody's calling him, nobody's doing any of that, right? Yeah, and I think when you see him walk from that first pole, yes, right. he's moving quickly, but it's very smooth movements, right? <laughs> Yep. And so, so you see him come around, you, you know, he, so you see his movements are smoother Then he gets a little excited. And again, then he's just, and that's when he catches sight of that scary. Yeah. So he's way back there and I, hopefully it's bigger for you guys, but I mean, even at the tiny little speck that I'm watching, it's like you get that, you get that compression, 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 yeah. right? Where um, you ever, you see your dog get to something and they're like, oh my gosh, what is that? Right. And they, that head drops, that head drops. Um, mm -hmm. So we try to help them relatively soon to resolve it. Um, cause he's a young dog, so you don't want to, you know, let him hang. Uh, <laughs> um, so, but you see how, you know, he's just throwing himself on stuff and just really, so, so this is a really good example of, you know, they had, we had to do a little, and that, yeah. it does look like happy go lucky, but it's not. You yeah, but can, you see him hit her in the legs just now, yeah. right? He turned and wham, he, he hit the Lisa in the red shirt. Um, as he, as he turns. So that was, he never hit anybody before. Right. So sort of some of those things. And now, yeah, he's going back to investigate again. Mm -hmm. It's like, I don't like that thing. <laughs> yeah. 
He's adorable. Uh, Sharon's doing a great job with him. I mean, he's a baby. Um, so one of the things she is doing is she's actually reducing how many classes she takes with them and having more focus work with him. Um, so she's doing a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of stuff right to help the boy uh, uh, be okay with with um, with how to control himself. Because some dogs they know they do it very naturally, and other dogs need help, right? Need a little more help on that. So, and she's doing exactly his, yeah, and that's true, Susan. He could be going through a fear period. So it's, mm -hmm. you know, um, even though he, he, he's done it, cause I, I, I got to see, I got to meet and spend some time with him uh, the day before. And he's usually pretty easy, but it, it he, he goes, he gets aroused pretty quick and he, he stays up there. So uh, Sharon's working on teaching him how to calm down a little faster. Right? Yep. And that's and, something she's always probably going to have to deal with because that's who he is. But you can get a handle on it. Uh, Joanne's a perfect example of that. <laughs> do I do I have a handle on it? Some days it doesn't feel like. <laughs> but mostly you do. <laughs> and I know what I'm doing. So it's just, no. So, so, you know, looking at that golden, I think if we, <clears throat> if we looked at the opposite side of it, right, that dog could have compressed, backed away, barked at it, bark, 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 bark. It could have ran in the other direction, right? Um, all of those things would be kind of a sign of that. Um, and so I would like to take the opportunity, right, to, to tell people, because I see it all the time. And I think it's a 50-50 shot if it works for you. And I don't know about odds, but I'm not willing to, to take a 50-50 chance with the dog. I want to I wanna really get closer to 100%. If my dog is super fearful about stuff, right? A lot of stuff that we were taught back in the day was you take that cookie and you're like, come here, right? And you lure them in with food to the scary thing, okay? So mm -hmm. if we go back to the snake, right? And I'm like, here's a hundred dollars. Come here, come touch it, right? And and maybe your check was short and you, you really need a hundred bucks, right? You might touch that because you really need the money right? Where the dog really might do something that's pushing them way far out of their comfort zone just because they really want food. So instead, and I know Nancy and I kind of use the same thing where I will go up and I will look at it and I will bend over and, and, and you have to be genuine about it, right? So, so I might say, oh my gosh, look at this. Look at this mouse. Isn't that, that's pretty crazy. It's interesting, right? And I, I'm genuinely looking at it. I'm not like, oh, do you, do you see this? What's this? Right. And I'm not trying to draw the dog in. I'm genuinely investigating it. And if you want to do an experiment, find a random thing in your house, like go look at a table leg, genuinely look at the table leg. And I guarantee you, most of your dogs will come and be like, what are, what are you doing? <laughs> right. They want to investigate what you're investigating. And it's a much, it's a much better way to give the dog the option of whether or not they can resolve that. Mm -hmm. And well, when they say no, <laughs> I have two shepherds. Of course, they're going to be nosy and see what that is. And but, so, well, and Beth, Beth is right. She reminded um, the golden little Sully was barking very vocal uh, throughout that whole thing. So yeah, he was barking, uh, running around, barking, and all that. And usually, I mean, he's not a he's not a quiet he's not a barky golden, but he's not a quiet golden either. But yeah, he was barking um, as he was running around. That was true. I forgot all about that. Um, so yeah, so he and again he's young. He doesn't, and so a lot of the focus is impulse control for that young man, um, so he can get uh, better at it. And that's what Lisa did, right? She walked over, she was looking at it and kind of checking it out. And but he still had a difficult time resolving it, right? So, um, but it's just again, some of that could be his age, his experience. He hasn't been, you know, he hasn't seen it enough. All those things uh, in this case. Um, play a part, right? And Mary had a good question. Is the answer the same or arouses up or down? Um, yeah, it depends how much anxiety is behind that arousal too, right? Because some dogs are just get amped up and they're not scared. Other dogs are worried. So it depends on how worried the dog is and how, um, and how amped up he gets. Sometimes for some dogs, if there's an anxiety component, you might have to take them out 
you know, to go out for a short walk or something to kind of calm things down and then come back into the situation. And some dogs may never be able to come back in, well, not never, but may not be able to come back to that situation at that moment. But yeah, sometimes giving them a break sooner rather than later is usually a great option. So if they're having a little trouble, you can take them out of the situation, give them a break, and then bring them back. A lot of times for some of the dogs that where there's an anxiety component, it's very helpful. Well, and this is from personal experience. Sometimes even when there's not anxiety, you have to get away from the, right. the distracting thing, right? So sometimes sometimes even if they're just getting all jacked up about it and there is no anxiety, you have to go outside. Yeah. Right? Just depends if the dog can resolve the issue that's causing it or not, right? I mean, mm -hmm. space and distance is a big thing in helping, um, you know, dogs to calm down. Right. I don't know if Erin's on the call, but her dog was a really wonderful example of yesterday was a fantastic example of she was amped up and how she quickly, she quickly like resolved it really well. She was, she was excited. She wasn't scared or anxious or anything. She was just, um, excited and she resolved and, and like within seconds she was calm and relaxed and you know, so it's pretty interesting how how uh, the difference we those the the workshop was pretty uh, fascinating with the with the different dogs. So yeah, because her puppy was a young puppy, um, very very high aroused puppy. Because Erin seems to be on uh, on the market for that, uh, and she <laughs> but she was able to calm down pretty quick and she resolved it really really fast, which was really nice to see um, uh, to see that um, she Fido honey. <laughs> I know this is my cameo. It's time for me. <laughs> um, talk about arousal. Stop it. Um, but yeah, her dog was able was went up, but was able to come down very very quickly. Um, yeah, I don't think she's on tonight, but um, I hate to show the video without asking her. Um, even though I know she probably won't care, but um, her puppy was really it was a very interesting. Um, very highly excited dog, very young, silly, but she was able to chill out here pretty, you know, pretty fast. So, um, anyway, so, so she, so th that's what you want to see. Sometimes arousal isn't bad. It's not a bad thing. It's not like if you have a, a dog that gets aroused, a lot of us look for dogs that have, um, that are a little more aroused, but more, but it's a more balanced, right? They can get excited and they can come down really fast. What makes it, what makes any characteristic difficult is is if it's too much or if it doesn't resolve quickly. So right. if you have a dog that's, uh, for example, um, um, Jive, uh, she's not noise sensitive, I wouldn't say that, but she notices some things and things might worry her, but she resolves it really fast. So most people don't even notice that she was even worried about it. Because I noticed that when she was eight weeks old, the gate made a noise, she went, whoa, and then she goes, oh, and then that was it. And that's how she is about everything. Something might scare her and then she goes, eh, okay. And she's done with it. So it's not a big deal. It, it only becomes a big deal if she would be worried and would not resolve it really quickly. So. Had a very substantial mirror for, oh, 75. Oh, I don't know, retrieve me, let's see, he got spooked. Oh, wow. Well, that was a pretty big deal though, Janice. A mirror fell on him that's 75 pounds. Yeah. There's some dogs out there, they would never get over that. Right. So, so I would, so Janice, one of the things I would do to help him through that is a little bit of counter conditioning, right? I would do the relaxation protocol near a wall. And a mirror. And a mirror, not, not, uh, don't do any dumbbell throws near it yet. I would right. get comfortable in that near a mirror and in that environment. And then I would add the, the, the dumbbell. I would not add it beforehand. It'll go much faster if you do that. Um, you know, it, I would definitely just work on just close to walls and all that stuff. Um, and then just because that's a pretty big, so that's more than arousal. That's like a little bit of trauma there that happened at, you know, to that dog, right? Yep. That's a, yeah, that's a huge mirror. 75 pounds is enormous. 
And yeah, not only did you have right the falling piece of it, but I'm sure it's shattered. So then you have this this noise component to it as well. And uh, that's just a it's a terrible thing. Um, yeah, and I would just do the relaxation call by by there. Maybe if you go to a correction clinic and just relax, have them relax. Not not ask them. You can do do the regular stuff, but not a retrieve. And then just just have them be there and relax and chill out, and then. I, when you see his, he's more comfortable than I, I might do a retrieve. The other thing is I wouldn't, I usually never use a dumbbell when I'm starting to teach a retrieve anyway. I don't know how you taught it or how you started it, but if you, you might go back to a toy or something and make it more fun for him and take the dumbbell out of it for a little while, right? I mean, I start teaching a retrieve with a toy and then I transition to the dumbbell. So, but I don't know if anybody else, uh, how you started but you might consider that. And even if you didn't start it, um, um, if you even if you didn't start with a toy, you might go back, you might start a toy just to change it, just change it up for him. And just have him just throw the toy, have him retrieve it and all that stuff with a toy that has nothing to do with the dumbbell. I've used toys and so it's but the problem is, Janice, I love you, but I I know I, you're a little bit of a pusher, <laughs> so <laughs> so back it. I would say back it down a little bit more. I bet you're still putting a lot of pressure on him, right? You want to get you want to get to where he's doing it happily, with no hesitation. Yeah. So yeah, I would just use a little bit further away from that wall and use a toy and have him retrieve a toy. And when he's doing that really happy, then I would, that only then would I change it to a dumbbell. So, um, and you're using the relaxation right now. <laughs> I know, I fed my dog, Sharon. That's my relaxation protocol, so they stop bugging me. <laughs> um, yeah, so Janice, I would do it a little bit, just a toy and just play and ch make, change it into more play for him. Cause they know when you're trying to work through stuff, trust me. Right. <laughs> yeah, he's good outside. Well, yeah, duh. He's like, I know you're trying to get me to do that. It's almost, it's it's similar to like, I'm not mad. It's okay. I'm not mad. They're like, yes, you are. Yeah. <laughs> you're so mad. Come here. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm not doing that. No. <laughs> Exactly. So he knows that you're, you know, you, you want to get that, that done. Right. So it's, it's, uh, so you might have to go back a little bit more. Um, and I think you're fine. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, anyway. So yeah, I would, I would, um, and I would try to uh, relax more and then do it for shorter periods. Janice is the other option. The other thing, um, with arousal, you guys, uh, with the other, with, with arousal, you want to really shorten your sessions if you're trying to work through something. And I mean short, like two or three times and that's it. Like no joke. Because what people tend to do is they get a couple of good ones and they want to keep on going. And that is a kiss of death because that's when it's going to go bad, right? So you definitely want to, um, you definitely want to work on keeping the sessions super, super short. My cat is really peeved that his bed is full of stuff. So I, there. Nice. I can show you a nose work video with some arousal so you can see maybe a little more um, of that unproductive movement if you'd like. Go for it. Okay. Let me know. I haven't shared yet. So let me see. So Did make it, make it. Uh, make it big, use the big screen so that it's bigger for them. And then we'll, we'll be out of the picture so I can get my cat to stop being a turd. <laughs> can you guys see? Yes, hold on. Let me let me get rid of the, okay. It's good oh. when we have multi multitask. All right, so he's gonna be coming from around this way and I just want you to watch, um, just how all over the place he is, right? So here we come, pulling, pulling, <laughs> pulling, right? <laughs> right, you, you go from a full run and pull to like, hold on, I'm gonna sniff these leaves. Nope, I'm gonna go over here. Nope, I'm gonna do this, right? There's just, 
it's just sort of everywhere. Um, right. And you can see he's switching. I know some of you might not do nose work, but he's switching in between working and, and just sort of being crazy. Right. He's, he's, um, running around. So he found one. And as he continues on, I wow. actually, so the, the, the other hide is actually right here. And part of the problem too, is the wind is coming um, and it's blowing kind of out towards this field here. Um, but there comes a point where he's, he's, chasing odor and he's he's working himself up because he's running and he's running and he's running and he's running and finally i i am like just sit right and i know the sun shine is kind of but That's you just cool. see him back and forth over here back and forth and so i finally tell him dude just take a seat and he sits and i'm like all right now calm down let's find it and he goes oh look it's right here so, I mean, just a simple sit and, and he was able to get right back to work, right? So I've done a lot of practice with this guy. Um, so, you know, you, you can sort of see how quickly he can move when I calm him down to like, oh yeah, it's right here, um, back into working mode. But in life, if this was a pet dog, right? And, and we're trying to go for a walk. It is miserable, right? <laughs> Cause he's like, Oh, a squirrel. Oh, a car. Oh, look at this. Look at that. Look at this. Right. And it's very unpleasant to try and walk him down the street. Um, so I had to do just a ton, a ton, a ton of work of, right. Let's just sit and watch the world go by, which is where the relaxation protocol really, really helped us. Mm -hmm. Um, he is a lot of dog. And, um, I will tell you, you watch some dogs, a lot of dogs actually do the relaxation protocol and they will like sit, they're laying down, they might roll on a hip. They're actually pretty relaxed, right? They're just, they just look kind of chill, right? I've been doing relaxation protocol with him for almost two years now and he can lay down and he can watch the world go by, but he's never truly relaxed, okay? I, I've honestly never seen the dog really relax unless he's in a crate or at home. So he, he just kind of buzzes constantly. It's a, it's a lot of dog. But he is able to, you know, and that's what I mean. That's who it is. And, and just so you know, the arousal is a genetic thing, right? Either you are, or you aren't. And that's how, you know, that's how it goes. Um, but you can, with some training, it'll always be there. I'm not going to lie. But you can oh, you can manage it and you can teach him how to be right because that's right. basically what you're doing. Instead of fighting with him, you can teach him how to be right because that's what you that's the goal, right? You can also I'm going to put this on for you. You can buy the video or rent it or watch the relaxation protocol. Um, a Suzanne's relaxation protocol. I it's highly I highly recommend it. It's worth doing for sure. Um, yeah. You can rent it or you can buy it. I would recommend you buy it because you can just download it and you're all good. And it tells exactly how, step by step how to do it and what to look for and all that stuff. It's really, really great. Uh, we use it now. Um, it has been part of it has been part of our curriculum and what we do at Furrier Canine for a very long time. Uh, the relaxation protocol, Kim. Um, this would be great for Mr. Finn, by the way. Uh, he was the other excitable, excitable shepherd in uh, in the workshop yesterday. Um, one of the the it's basically you relax, the dog relax. So initially you prompt him into a down, but you don't keep prompting him. You the cue should be you're relaxed too, the dog's relaxed, and then you reinforce them be, for being relaxed in that position, and then eventually you can achieve real relaxation. Uh, through that. However, um, some dogs, you might only be able to get maybe a minute or two of him, of them being able to do it. What you don't want to do over time is keep telling him to go down because that, then it's a, then it's a down. It's not a relaxation protocol. The first couple of times until they learn what you want, you, you have to ask them to do the down. But, um, after a while they should, your position, you, 
you can cross your arms, you can cross your legs, and that that's a cue to him that, hey, we're relaxing and that we're not doing anything. Because that's, I think, one of the things, is, and I think Joanne alluded to it, we don't teach our dogs not to do anything. We just want to keep them busier. And I'm going to be honest, and when we have our reactive dog class, there are when other trainers come there, the whole goal is to keep the dog busy, which increases arousal. It doesn't help them any, at all. We are, re, our reactive dog classes are boring. Mm -hmm. <laughs> dogs, they sit, they learn how to relax and be calm around the other dogs. That's all we do for the most part. And then we eventually start adding movement and intensity and all those kind of things. But it's, that's just how it is. And it's, it's a really wonderful technique. We use it all the time. Yep. And, and so I sort of, I, I like going back to use the snake analogy because there's just a lot of people who are fearful or don't like snakes, right? So when you're trying to keep them busy, it's like, here's the snake. And you're like, don't look at that. Look here, look here. Can you come over here? Can you do this? What's, what's two plus two? Okay. We're going to do this. How do you make a pie? What about this? Right. And, and they're like, there's, get out of the way. There's still a snake behind you. Right. So the dog has not forgotten the thing right? That they're trying to watch whether or not it's other dogs playing, maybe they're excited or maybe they're fearful, but again, they're you trying to step in and make them do other things. They might do them, but they've never forgotten what's on the other side, right? Where relaxation protocol, if you said, I know buddy, it's kind of a scary snake. Are you okay right here? Like, can we just, can we just watch it? And the dog's like, okay. Right. And when you give them a moment to just kind of have some quiet, silence and and watch right and just relaxation kind of sets in right because for the first minute right maybe they're like oh, i don't i don't like that so much right and then then it doesn't move so much and then you just start to see that body relax and relax and oh, sometimes you get a big sigh sometimes they'll roll on a hip it tells you they're getting more and more comfortable with the position um but you know nancy hit it on the head we it's a skill to teach and we don't teach our dogs to do nothing, right? Every time you go somewhere, think about it. How many times are you like, just chill out and let the world go by? We don't do it, right? Sit, right. come here, stay, eat a cookie. Can you give me five? Like we're always doing stuff with our dogs. Right. And it's like, and it's a skill because sometimes life is boring. And that's why, and that's why Janice uh, at the shows, he needs to just do nothing and just hang out, uh, especially at a show because we're and it also is very helpful for the handler, I, I might add, uh, because if you the relaxation protocol is for you, too, you need to be relaxed. It's really, really, really helpful for the handler to be able to um, uh, to do it, too. Um, so it's a it's a great skill, especially at trials. Um, it's great, uh, especially like obedience and agility. It's wonderful because you can have your dog out and do that. Nose work, you can't really do that. So. <laughs> I use it at the vet. Yes. Yeah. Right. Because he gets very excited with other dogs coming and going. It's just, nope, just, we're just going to hang out and watch the dogs go by. And he's like, I don't like it, but okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. And that's what I mean. You can, you should be able to use it everywhere. Mm -hmm. So, um, because that's one of the, for arousal, you guys, and teaching impulse control, you have to start from a relaxed position. <laughs> if you're already amped up, if you're coming in all wired, nothing good will come of whatever you're trying to do. <laughs> just just doesn't work. Um, and just like, well, and you know, and and last week was one of those weeks for me. I was late for everything. Um, and I so you, I'm already coming in amped up. So the rest, you know, some of this, you know. It took, I had to stop and calm myself because you're coming in all all wired up. So it's just not going to be a good, it's just not a good set, setup for, for, for human or dog. Yeah. And, and coming back around a little bit on the conversation to, you know, in the home, you know, just as a pet dog, right? If, if you are about to have guests over, right, and I have an Aussie, I'm not going to let the Aussie be in the backyard chasing the kids and nipping at their heels before we have company, right? Because that's not good either. And so, you know, the if your dog has issues with people coming in the door, right, maybe put them on a leash or put them in a crate until everyone gets in and gets settled. And then we let them out. We just give them some time to decompress, right? So anytime you ask your dog to insert themselves, 
in that moment of time with whatever it is, right? And people coming and going, going in and out of doors, um, you know, in and out of cars, all of those types of moments where things are beginning or ending, right? Think about crowds coming and going and, and all of that. Those are the hardest moments for dogs. So those are really the moments you want to manage. So then you can start to work on the training. So you're starting from a good place. Right. And the other thing too, uh, the other thing is you, you definitely want to, yeah, definitely want to start from a, a calm place and also for yourself. And, um, Oh my God, it went away. <laughs> You're too relaxed. Yeah, I know. Oh my God. <laughs> um, uh, you, you definitely want to be able to, because when the dog isn't, you want, oh, I know what I was going to say. With the arou highly aroused dogs, and, and Joanne could could agree here, or she, do she does it, you do go between managing and training. When your dog is losing his mind, there's no learning happening. So don't do any training. It's not going to work. If your dog is already out of his mind, there's no learning happening. So it's management, right? And sometimes you might have to manage that dog and then you can start training and depending on the situation. So there's no problem going between both, but don't try to train the dog when the dog is already losing his mind. You're, nobody's going to learn a thing. Everybody's going to be unhappy and frustrated and, and you're not going to, so you're going to, sometimes you're going to go between managing and training, managing and training, managing and training, especially for a dog that's highly aroused because you've got to make sure that that dog can uh, be calm so that he can learn because nobody, nobody, no animal I know can learn when he's all amped up. Right. And when they're in that state, uh, yanking on the leash or saying things extra loud doesn't help. <laughs> well, right? and, here, and and Sharon just put Sully just got managed into a crate, wouldn't relax, right? Yep, that's exactly. But that's what you do, right? Yep. You couldn't do it this way. Okay, let's try this, right? And help him help himself. And he's a young dog, so there's going to be a lot of those moments, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. It's like okay, you need to calm down a little bit. I'm just thinking, I'm like, Sharon, next time I'm in Chicago, I'll get a bottle of wine and we can talk about aroused dogs and what you have to look forward to. It does get better, I promise. He's only 10 months. You you probably have a couple of years of it, but because Bam is now a lot better than he was, but he's three. And he's still a lot. So, you know. Uh, but he, yeah, but uh not, but you're, you're just getting started on that journey. He's only, he's a baby yet. So. Yeah. Wine helps sometimes just letting you know. <laughs> oh, that's true. Uh -huh. um, so anybody have any questions? Cause that's basically, um, and yeah, uh, a lot, we had some really good questions like about uh, if there's an anxiety component, it is a different little, little the re relaxation uh, protocol will help, but you might have to, there, there might be a little more things that might be more gender, right? That you need to just, um, you might need to uh, work on, right? Because it's, there's the, the anxiety is going to be a thing. You got to deal with the anxiety first, right? Yep. And I think, you know, you, you hear Nancy and I mentioned Suzanne Clothier all the time. I mean, she really is just a, a heck of a mentor and she's taught us both an innumerable amount of stuff, but one of the things you'll hear her say, if you ever hear a, a workshop, seminar, or anything, she continues the phrase, how is this for you, right? right? And so it's the answer might be different seven seconds later after you ask the first time. So, you know, when there's components like anxiety and things like that, right, you have to constantly ask the dog, how about now? Is it okay now? Are you still doing okay? Right? Because they may say, I was, and now I'm not. And you right. have to adjust something to make it okay and make it better. Mm -hmm. And just for those for those uh, lumpers out there, I was one. <laughs> I was one. You want to take bigger steps towards the next goal. It's like don't. Smaller and smaller is better, and you'll get you'll get there faster taking shorter shorter steps for sure. Because otherwise, you'll be <laughs> uh, if you try to lump it all together, the dog's gonna be like, nope, not good for me. <laughs> doesn't work. Yep. And it goes much slower that way. It seems longer when you split it into 
to tinier pieces, but boy, the dogs pick it up so much faster. So, right. All right, guys. Well, this is the part two and there's so much more to <laughs> learn about it. Um, I think next week, uh, I wanted to, one of the, one of the, uh, one of our students actually brought up the topic and I thought it was a good one. It's how do you, how do you get the most out of your dog, out of your training? Like, how do you get the most you can out of it? Um, so, and I thought that was a really great question. So I think sometimes you don't, but <laughs> I said, but I said, I know I have a couple of answers for that. So we'll talk about that next week. Anyway, thank you all. Uh, it was great. Uh, thank you all for coming. Have a great rest of your evening. Yep. Thanks everybody. And if you haven't already uh, followed for better, for worse and for your canine, you'll be able to see what the new topics are and, and be able to catch us every Sunday night. So thank you. All right. Thanks guys. Bye. Bye.